So I've already gone over the clinical signs of narcissism. If you haven't already seen that video, it's one of my first or second videos in my series. One of the signs is having an inflated ego. A narcissist has zero self-esteem and a huge ego. It is a terrible combination. They brag, they boast, they're 100% obsessed with themselves. They might post selfies on social media all day long. They constantly talk about how great they are. If they're cerebral, they tend to talk about their intellectual achievements and accomplishments. If they're somatic, they brag about their skills in bed. These are very grandiose, overt personalities, and they're pretty easy to spot. Then there are the covert narcissists. Those are the wolves in sheep's clothing. They're not easy to spot at all. Their ego is just as big, but they're able to hide their level of narcissism by appearing to be very kind and very giving. But evil comes in beautiful packages, so they will be very, very charming as well. But remember, there is a huge difference between someone who is good and someone who is being good. It's also important to realize that a person with genuine inner self-esteem doesn't constantly talk about themselves because they don't need to. When you talk to them, they give off good, positive vibes. They make you feel good. You can feel their happiness, and you're left feeling enlightened and inspired. When you talk to a narcissist, however, you feel exhausted and drained. They are very concerned with their public image because a narcissist does not exist on their own. They throw their reflection out there for people to see and react to it. These reactions from other people are called narcissistic supply, and that's what feeds the ego. They need to do this in order to survive. It's very difficult for a normal person to understand this concept because normal people aren't wired like this. But the narcissist needs attention from other people in the same way that a human being needs to eat. It's way outside the realm of normal, and it goes far beyond feeling good about themselves. It's about survival. If the narcissist's ego is not fed, they'll have a mental breakdown. The false self which he has created and the reflection which he's thrown out into the world essentially dies. There is a victim hero mentality as well, and this is how they preserve their public image, by coming across as one or the other. It's a defense mechanism. So check out red flag number four in my red flag playlist for more information on that. Since deep down on a subconscious level, because remember, on a conscious level, the narcissist thinks he's great. But on a subconscious level, he knows he's a fraud. He knows he has completely fabricated this character. So he has a constant underlying feeling of paranoia that people will figure out that he's not real. So if a narcissist gets worried that people are saying negative things about him, and of course worried that people would try to sabotage him, he wants to protect his perceived public image before this happens. When someone is constantly paranoid about this, they employ a tactic known as damage control. With Robert, he pissed off so many people, and when he realized that he pissed them off, or if he felt that people were trying to ruin him, he would contact other people who didn't know him very well, and he would tell them, hey look, this is what's going on, it's not true, people are talking about me, you gotta trust me, if you've heard anything about me, just ignore it, they're all lies. I said previously he's a musician, so he would contact concert venues. He would send these long emails about this, he said, she said, don't listen to that person, I hope you still want to work with me, anything you've heard is not true, normal people do not do this. If someone is constantly trying to protect their ego and protect their good name, that's a problem. It means something's wrong. So, again, referencing red flag number four, the narcissist will always come across as the victim or the hero. When someone is always the victim, always trying to protect their name, always trying to do damage control, you should see this as a bad sign. There was a time when I was so brainwashed by my ex, and I took his side for a very long time. I protected him and defended him, and I really, really thought he was wonderful. I believed in him. I thought people really were trying to sabotage his success. I myself couldn't understand why all these people hated him. This dynamic is known as the shared psychosis between a narcissist and his codependent partner. It's where the narcissist, who believes he's the victim, who believes everyone is up to get him, convinces his partner that he really is the victim, and he gets her to take part in his fantasy world. The codependent partner completely enables the narcissist, and his behavior actually gets worse. 
There will be a video about this in the future. I haven't decided if it will be in the red flag category or in the codependency category, but it's a big topic. And if you're currently involved with a narcissist, hopefully you'll understand what's happening. If you were involved with one and you experienced this, understand that you are not alone. Narcissists and the relationships that they have with their codependent counterpart follow a playbook. The patterns are very, very predictable. So as soon as you know the patterns, you can better understand what happened and why it happened. 